afternoon. Uh, this is uh, Evgeny Bajanov and uh, my YouTube channel, The Dialogue of Civilizations. Uh, I'd like to continue my conversations devoted to the United States of America. If you remember, um, in my previous uh, talks, I explained that uh, my wife and myself, we arrived in San Francisco in 1973 during the rapprochement between the Soviet Union and the United States when the relations improved to a certain extent. Uh, our consulate was opened in San Francisco and we began to work there. And of course, the, the main uh, task of our uh, consulate, as I already mentioned before, uh, was to promote ties with uh, with Americans, with different sections of, of the American society. And we were quite opt optimistic about that, first of all, because both governments, the Soviet government and the American government at that time were quite serious about improving further relations between the, the two states. And also because we remember it, uh, the history of Russian-American relations, they were not always difficult or unfriendly. Uh, and I, I call this uh, talk, I mean, today's talk, the, the zigzags of Russian-American relations to show that uh, this relations changed with, uh, with, the, uh, with time. At some periods, uh, in some periods, they were quite good, even friendly. Then uh, they deteriorated and then improved again. Uh, so now I'd like to recall, of course, not in detail, but briefly, the history of relations between Russia, the Soviet Union, and the United States. In the middle of the 18th century, uh, Americans uh, fought against the British crown. They wanted to have independence from, from Britain. And uh, uh, British king, George III, he uh, applied to Russian uh, Tsarina, uh, Empress uh, Catherine the Great, asking to send Cossacks, the elite Russian troops, to, to the United States, to America, to fight against insurgents in, in, the, in America, against the British crown. Uh, Catherine the Great uh, flatly refused, uh, despite the fact that she was offered a lot of money for that, and she preferred to have neutrality in, in this conflict between the uh, Great Britain and, and Americans. Uh, but in, in fact, of course, she sympathized with Americans. Then her son, uh, Pavel, he uh, uh, established de facto uh, relations with uh, New America, with the United States. And uh, then uh, his son, Alexander I, recognized the United States officially. And he developed very close ties with Amer American President Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson used to write letters regularly to Alexander I, calling him my brother, my dear friend, and saying in his letters that Russia was the dearest state for Americans, that uh, uh, the warmest state among all states of the world, and uh, that uh, uh, Russians had the same views on uh, development on uh, everything uh, with uh, f as Americans had. So it was a, a friendly state from the point of view of uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson. Uh, then uh, another politician, American politician, John Adams, who f later became uh, president of the United States, he spent uh, some years when he was a, a boy in Russia, and then he returned to Russia as ambassador of the United States during the Napoleon invasion of, of Russia. And of course, he, as the United States as a whole, sympathized with Russia, and he spent all the invasion period being in St. Petersburg. Uh, after the, the war was over, Russian Tsar Alexander I was instrumental in negotiations between uh, the United States and Great Britain, because they had a, a, uh, another war before that, and uh, he was the one who helped to bring peace between the Great Britain and, and the United States, Alexander the, uh, the I. Uh, then his uh, brother became uh, emperor of, uh, of Russia, Nicholas I, and under him, 
relations uh, d- uh, between Russia and the United States d- developed further. Americans helped Russians to build uh, the first highway, a very important highway from St. Petersburg to Moscow. Then American engineers participated in the building of the military base in Kronstadt. Uh, scientific and cultural ties uh, developed. And then uh, came the war, the Crimean War between Russia on one side and uh, Great Britain and France on the other side. Uh, Great Britain and France attacked uh, the uh, the port, the military, the main seaport, military seaport of Russia in, in, in the Crimea, Sebastopol. And Americans uh, were very much in favor of Russia. A lot of Americans participated in that war as volunteers on the Russian side. Also Ameri- uh, American doctors, medical uh, assistants, all of them uh, you know, from the United States went to Sebastopol and fought together with uh, Russians against Great Britain and uh, and France. And when the war was over and the war was lost by Russia, uh, governor of California with a lot of people went to the Russian consulate in San Francisco uh, to show respect to the Russian crown, to the Russian state. And being there, they learned that not far from the Russian consulate, there is a pavilion where French and British celebrated their victory. So all these Americans headed by the America, by California governor went to that pavilion and attacked British and uh, uh, French there. And by the way, during the war, I forgot to mention, uh, Americans uh, supplied military equipment to Russians. American ships chased uh, British and French ships uh, headed uh, to Russia to fight against Russia. And uh, American... Uh, Diplomats supplied intelligence information uh, to Russians to help them to, uh, you know, counterattack uh, French and, and British. So uh, during that war, America was uh, completely on the side of Russia. Then, uh, in the later, uh, Russia was, uh, began a war against uh, Turkey, uh, Ottoman Empire defending the uh, f- uh, Christians who lived in the Balkans. And uh, Americans treated that war as a crusade of Russians against Muslims and uh, uh, were completely in favor of the, of the Russian position. Uh, and then uh, came the uh, moment when Russians helped Americans in a big way. Uh, a, a civil war started between uh, the North and the South in America. And British and French were very much interested in splitting America into two parts. And they supported the South, which wanted to, you know, to leave the Union with the North. And uh, a, a joint uh, fleet, French, uh, British fleet, uh, approached the New York Harbor and was there waiting for for the good opportunity to attack New York. And at that time, a Russian fleet came into the harbor of New York, and it was uh, met by uh, New Yorkers as, uh, you know, as uh, uh, saviors. Uh, People, you know, the whole New York crowded at the seafront, and uh, people shouted that Russians are saving us, Russians will save us. And then Lincoln, president of the United States, visited the Soviet, uh, the, excuse me, the Russian ship with the command of the Russian fleet. And then uh, his, uh, first his wife visited the ship. And then uh, he, uh, Lincoln himself, and all senators with the members of their families visited Russian ships. And the Russian fleet was there for the whole year. And uh, the whole year, Americans treated the Russian fleet as saviors, as good friends. And uh, people were saying that because of the Russians, French and British didn't dare to attack New York, attack America. And uh, at the same time, when uh, this uh, Russian fleet was in New York Harbor, uh, another Russian fleet was sent to San Francisco. And it also guarded San Francisco from attacks by... British and uh, French. So the Russian role was very important. And by the way, British and uh, uh, French were very angry and talked about an alliance between uh, America and, and, and Russia. 
So relations uh, continued to be very friendly up uh, to a certain period. In uh, 1881, Russian Tsar uh, Alexander II, a great reformer, he was praised in America for his uh, bloodless uh, reforms when he freed all Russian peasants from serfdom. Uh, he was killed uh, by terrorists. And in Russia, it, it was said that the terrorists were Jews. And the big hunt started against, against the Jews, that they were guilty of all uh, problems of Russia. And uh, as a result, a lot of Jews began to emigrate to the United States. And first of all, uh, emigrating to the United States, they brought new ideas about Russia being very critical of Russia, for the empire, its practices against Jews and practices against ethnic minorities uh, in general, uh, they spread this uh, information or disinformation, information about the Russian empire, very negative in the US. Uh, then, at the same time, on the other side, uh, their arrival in America brought additional problems to the United States. It's housing of these people, uh, work of these people, and uh, the, their cultural assimilation, because they were very, very different in their habits, not, uh, came from not very developed areas, and etc., etc. So, uh, as a result, Americans, first of all, uh, heard critical things about uh, the Russian Empire, and at the same time, they were uh, nervous because of the arrival of so many newcomers from the Russian Empire. And the United States began to put pressure on the Russian government, asking the Russian government to uh, stop this immigration. At that time, the Tsar of Russia was Alexander III, who was not a reformer, who was a very tough uh, uh, Tsar. And uh, he said uh, that, uh, you know, don't interfere with our internal affairs. You don't like when people from Europe interfere with the affairs of America, and we don't like when others interfere with our uh, internal problems. And uh, in addition to this, he said that we cannot uh, stop this immigration. They want to immigrate, let them go. And uh, to change conditions for them in Russia, in order uh, for them to change their view and not, not to... Uh, want to, to emigrate to the United States, to America. Uh, we cannot change those conditions because Jews, uh, they are uh, revolutionaries, they are uh, uh, criminals, uh, they are terrorists. Half of those so-called revolutionaries, they are Jews. Two percent of our population are Jews, but among revolutionaries, 50 percent. And uh, at, at the same time, they control many sectors of the Russian economy, of the Russian social life, which is unacceptable. So we have to have restrictions on the, their occupation, on, their, on where they can live in Russia, in what part they can live, in what they cannot. So because of all this, uh, relations between Russia and America deteriorated. And uh, about that time, a famous book came out in America, published, uh, written by a man called, uh, uh, f f famous uh, diplomat and famous uh, s s scholar. And uh, he, uh, in his book, he depicted Russia as a very backward state, very reactionary state. And he claimed in his book that uh, uh, the government uh, didn't treat people as, as human beings and as human beings and these people themselves, uh, you know, they are of very low quality and uh, uh, didn't know anything about progress and about uh, liberties and things like that. So this image uh, of Russia uh, became even, even worse. Uh, so uh, as a result, uh, deteriorated uh, our bilateral relations deteriorated between America and Russia. And then uh, on the international scene, uh, we, our views and our positions uh, you know, went uh, different ways. And instead of working together, Russia and America began to clash on many issues in international relations. Uh, for example, uh, in 1904, a war started between Russia and Japan, and America was on the side of Japan. 
And uh, as a result of this war, there was a peace conference in America, uh, Portsmouth. Uh, and Americans participated in this conference. They were uh, instrumental in the arranging an, a, a peace agreement between Russia and Japan. And that peace agreement was very much in favor of Japan and not in favor of Russia. And Americans played a role in that. Uh, then Russian revolutionaries uh, began to arrive in, in America. And many of them, what they did, they took American citizenship and then they wanted to go back to Russia and continue their revolutionary anti-government activities uh, without uh, being arrested because they became American citizens. So it was, it was not easy for the Russian government to stop their activities to arrest them in Russia. So as a result, Russian consulate in, in the United States uh, stopped giving visas to people like that. So another scandal in our relations with the United States. So, you know, problem after problem. And then Bolsheviks came to power. In the beginning, it was perceived in America as a Jewish revolt in Russia. Uh, but then very soon they realized that uh, uh, people who came to power, they were not uh, Jews, Russians, Ukrainians, or whatever. They were Bolsheviks, communists. They prohibited all private industry. They introduced censorship. Uh, they uh, banned all political parties, all opposition. And uh, all of this was very strange, very unusual for Americans. They couldn't accept it. You know, private property, all this uh, ban on activities of uh, uh, opposition and all that. Uh, so America didn't even recognize the new, so uh, now it was already called Soviet government. And uh, up to 1933, there were no relations between the Soviet Union, the, the new Soviet state, and in America. Only after the Great Depression, when America experienced a lot of difficulties, the new American President Roosevelt decided to recognize uh, Russia because it was necessary economically and in many other ways. And America was began to change. It wasn't becoming a socialist state, but it was a, a less uh, uh, hostile to, to this idea. So uh, relations were established Diplomatic relations were established in 1933 between the Soviet Union and, and the United States. Uh, at this point, I'd like to stop and I will continue to describe relations between the Soviet Union and the United States in uh, my next talk. Mm -hmm.